Our first scripture reading, which we will read together, is Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy in the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I'd like to invite the children forward, and we'll meet at the front pew. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Good. All right. So, Owen, and I am totally blanking on your name. Sam. S-A-M, Sam. I went through the whole alphabet in my head before, and I kept giving you my son's name, and I'm like, I know it's not Ben. I know it's not Ben. But Sam, S-A-M, that's why I got three letters. Owen and Sam and Jackson and Violet, no, Scarlet and Violet. All right. And my name is? Pastor Robin. Robin. Excellent. So, oh, and by the way, I'm totally old school with with names. So when you graduate high school, you can call me Robin. (laughs) And up until then, I'm Pastor Robin. Yeah. And, And I will also tell you that when that happens... Kids come up to me, 18 years old, and they're so thrilled to be able to say it, and it's like a dagger in my chest, because I'm like, you're not old enough yet, but anyway, but it's totally old, old, yeah, anyway, so pass around until then. All right, pass around, you got it, Jackson. All right, so when we talk about God, God is bigger and greater than anything that we can imagine. So we use words to, dis- to, try, to, descri- to de- try to describe God, right? But there's no one word that totally describes God. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we use lots of different words where we say God is like, or God is like this, and God is like that. So I have this book, and it's called God is Like a Mother Hen, and that's actually, and all of the images in this book, that is a big chicken, right? All of these images in this book are taken from scripture. And at the end, I'll tell you what they are. But, oh, and there's a part that I want you to do. When, when I point to you, I want you to say, and much, much more. Can you, ready? And much, much more. Okay. God is like a mother hen who protects her little chicks. God is like a caring daddy who listens really well. God is like a teacher who smiles and says, try again. So God is like a mother hen, a caring daddy, a smiling teacher, and much, much more. Excellent. God is like a best friend who plays and shares with you. God is like a mommy who kisses all your hurts. God is like the air, right there, but you can't see it. God is like a best friend, a mommy kissing hurts, the air, and much, much more. Excellent. Oh, my gosh. 
God is like a child who loves to have surprises. God is like you, sometimes crying, sometimes laughing. God's love is like a teddy bear's love, ready for snuggling at night. God is like a child, you, a teddy bear's love, and much, much more. Oh my gosh. Can you think of what else God is like? Yes, Jackson. A piece of the air. A piece of the air, sure. Anyone else? Yes, Owen. God's like a chicken, yes. Right? Because, like, have you ever seen, there's, look, at some point today, go home and, and Google a chicken, like, covering the baby, baby chicks under, under her wings. It's a really cool image. Okay. So I, when I was reading this book, I read this book when my son, who is now 23, was seven and this is his handwriting. God is like a best, best friend. And he wrote his name, and I wrote how old he was when he said that. That's not a great... That's Yeah, he does have really good handwriting. Um, so just so you know, all those images that we read, the mother hen is from Matthew and Luke and Deuteronomy. Uh, we're also an eagle. Daddy, father, that's throughout Scripture. Teacher, Hosea, 1 Corinthians, friend. It's implied in Luke, mommy, Isaiah, the air that we breathe, Genesis and Acts. The child in you or the reader, Genesis. Love, steadfast love, that's all over the place. Experienced by like snuggling a teddy bear, 1 John 4. So, that's a lot of stuff? That's hard to say, but I did it, right? Yeah. Boom. Okay. Are we ready to say a prayer? Can you fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads? Uh, Gracious God, we are grateful that we are learning more and more about you, that we are coming to know who you are. And we thank you for all these images that help us understand who you are and, most importantly, that we are loved by you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Gregory of Nazianja, born in the year 329, spoke of the Trinity in this way. No sooner do I conceive of the one that I am illumined by the splendor of the three. No sooner do I distinguish three that I am carried back into the one. When I think of any of the three, I think of him as the whole and my eyes are filled and the greater part of what I am thinking escapes me. I cannot grasp the greatness of that one so as to attribute a greater greatness to the rest. When I contemplate the three together, I see but one torch and cannot divide or measure out the undivided light. Today is Trinity Sunday, and I'm going to expound on that and see if I can't make it even a little less clear. We contemplate God. We try to understand. Faith seeks understanding. But understanding or wisdom confesses that we are finite, limited beings trying to understand the transcendent and the infinite. We circle around trying to hone in and find words that, that approach the nature and substance of God. And all we have are metaphors. Creator, artist, 
architect, scientist, rock, lamb, lion, rock, savior. And we build a, a nest of these words in which to hold, in which to rest, in which to help form our faith. And then another word is added, and that word has wings. And we try to grasp it, and it flies away. And we try to grasp it again, and it escapes us again. And that word is Trinity. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. The early church tried to comprehend Jesus' relationship with God. In the beginning of John, the Gospel of John, we read that the Word was with God, the Word was God before anything was created. From Proverbs, we have Sophia, which means wisdom or word, who has always been crying out, clamoring for attention. Word and wisdom, spirit, God. We perceive that God is in relationship with God's self. Always and infinite. Trinity Sunday is a day of poetry. It doesn't need to be a day of treatises. Poetry that it seeks to describe the experience of God because God is made known in relationship. In fact, God models for us how we are to live. In scripture, we read stories of the experiences of God and now we sit in relationship with those stories, hoping that the Holy Spirit will open our hearts and minds to comprehend. And our stories that we share with one another, you were encouraged, encouraged to last week, share with your own unique voice, your stories and experiences of God, which we then hope that the Holy Spirit will open the hearts and minds of people to receive, to come to faith. Faith is always played out in relationship. God, us, one another, like a triangle. The greatest commandment, when Jesus was asked, love God, love one another as you love yourself. Again, this mutuality. How we are meant to live is modeled by the triune God. Every decision we make, we might ask ourselves, Lord, what would you have me do, recognizing that what I do affects everyone else? Life is lived in conversation, recognizing mutuality, seeking harmony. God, you, neighbor. God, you, family. God, you, creation. God, you, environment. Always this mutuality, this relationship that we see modeled in the triune God. In a culture, in our culture, that, that romanticizes the, the, the lone cowboy who doesn't need anybody, whose mantra is, nobody tells me what to do. This mythological cowboy or island unto himself, and that's when Poetry, Q. John Donne, No Man is an Island, or Romans 14, 7, for we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. This mythological cowboy cannot bend a knee to the triune God who calls us to live in relationship. It's not a line. If, if you struggle with the, with the image of triangle, how about a cross? It's this relationship and this relationship. Love God, love one another as we love ourselves. I sat at the shore yesterday contemplating the infinite. It's a great place to contemplate the infinite. The ocean, the waves, the tide. And then I was thinking about the tide and then I was like, it's really the moon and the earth and the ocean that creates the tide. It's so beautiful, so majestic, and yet so mysterious. I watched ships sail above it, the water. I watched children 
run joyfully to the water, followed by a adults who let their child out and the giggling of the children as their adults let themselves go. The lifeguards were there keeping watch while this pastor contemplated the eternal, surrounded by sand and really looking at that sand, just knowing that God knows the number and that all of us are but a grain of sand And yet we live in relationship with this transcendent God made known in Jesus Christ, made known through the power of the Holy Spirit, made known in God's creation. God is made known in relationship and created us for relationship. We are meant for one another and we are all meant for God. We celebrate today the blessed Trinity that we come, have come to understand as God, and we celebrate this triune life to which we are called, this mutuality in relationship with God and one another that is God's gift to us. In Jesus' name, amen.